Hello, my name is Tamara. I'm an instructor of the Hyaluron Pen at Creative Touch Beauty, located at the Microblading Art Center. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the Hyaluron Pen, how it's used, what supplies we use with it. We're gonna be talking about health and safety, the anatomy, as well as proper technique and bio revitalization and mesotherapy. We'll finish off by talking about um, where to purchase the resources that you'll need for these trainings and the earning potential that's available to you. As far as the theory, we're gonna understand the potential adverse reactions associated with dermal fillers and how to provide a clear guidance of how to avoid those reactions. Dermal fillers have a wide variety of properties associated risks and injection requirements. All the dermal fillers have the potential to cause complications. Most are related to the volume that's injected, the technique that is used, though some are associated with the material itself. So it's important to have good product. The majority of adverse reactions are mild or very transient, but they can have some bruising, um, some edema, some swelling. Serious adverse reactions are very rare and most are completely avoidable with proper education and technique. For optimal outcome, technicians should have a really good understanding of the facial anatomy, the individual characteristics that are available with the fillers, um, their indications, their contraindications, the benefits as well as the drawbacks, and ways to prevent and avoid potential complications. We're gonna start by learning about hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid, also known as HA, some people even know it as hyaluron. Hyaluron is um, the same thing as hyaluronic acid. It is a clear gel-like substance that's naturally produced by the body. The largest amounts are found in the skin, connective tissue and the eyes. It is the main structural element of our connective tissue. The main function is to retain water. This keeps us um, lubricated as well as moist. Our eyes, our joints, things like that. Hyaluronic acid is used to correct wrinkles, to help with wrinkles, facial folds, as well as the structure of the face, the framework and the volume that's in the face. The product that we're going to be talking about is called Hyphen. Hyphilia. Hyphilia is the leading filler product on the market for the Hyaluron pen. It's manufactured in Korea and it is distributed by Hyphilia USA. That's the main product we're gonna be going over. They offer quite a few different products. The first one we're gonna address is Dorothy. Dorothy is the thinnest of the products that they offer, and it is a 1.5% cross-linking, and that hyaluronic acid is quite thin, so it's great for the surface procedures that we do, like bio-revitalization, and it helps brighten the skin through skin resilience and moisture effects. The main products that are available through Hyphilia USA are the Petite, the Classic, and the Grand. And what distinguishes these and makes them different is the cross-linking and the particles in each one of these products. So for example, Hyphilia Petite has about 200 particles, Hyphilia Classic is 500, and the Grand is 1,000. So what these particles do is they make the product thicker. So for fine lines like around our mouths, things like that, for very thin lips, very thin skin, we would want to use the Petite. The Petite cross-linking, like I said, was 200, and it's not going to be as thick and bulky, so it's less likely to have lumps. The medium is 500 cross-linking, and it's more for moderately pronounced wrinkles, a little bit thicker, fuller wrinkles around the face and also for the lips. It's probably the most commonly used of the three. The Hyphilia Grand has quite large particles that are 1100, so it's much much thicker than the other products and it's good for giving structure but we've got to be very careful not to get lumps with that. So it's more of an advanced per product. We don't want to use that until we have some experience and we're feeling very confident with um, how we're using the device and the depth that we're using it. That's more for filling in um, contours of the face, giving more volume to the cheek area, to the lips, as well as filling in deeper wrinkles. 
Um, the shelf life of the Hyphilia products is about 36 months, so it's quite long. And also, it does need to be stored at room temperature, so anywhere from 35 to 85 degrees. It needs to be also stored out of direct sunlight. Each box has one milliliter of product. Usually we use about two thirds of that um, on a client for one procedure, but you can use up to one milliliter per application. The ampules that we use are 0.03 and 0.05, depending on which machine that we're using. The cross-linking stabilizes the hyaluronic acid. The natural molecules must be bound and cross-linked to give volume. Otherwise, it's not going to be thick enough. Hyaluronic acid cross-linking agent is BDDE. This cross-linking is very important for giving volume to your facial structure with the hyaluronic acid. The hyphilia is known for having the longest durability of the hyaluronic products that are available as well as superior results and is stabilized and it's from non-animal sources. There's quite a few devices that are available out there anywhere from very reasonably priced to very extremely expensive depending on the quality and the marketing and things like that. This device is also known as the needle free injector. This needle free injector is works by having a piston um, with a spring that's spring-loaded and it shoots air basically and this air shooting is what causes the product to go into the skin. We have a couple of devices that we carry and that we teach. One is um, the Comfort In Pen and its performance is quite different from most of the other machines that you crank. It's thinner than the size of an insulin needle. The Hyaluron Pen causes very little discomfort. There's slight pressure and and you hear a snap, but this really helps reduce anxiety for people that are scared of needles and it prevents needle stick injuries. When it goes into the skin, it dissipates a little bit. So where a needle goes deeper and you're more likely to get bruising and things like that. Health and safety, we highly recommend that everyone that uses the Hyaluron pen is bloodborne pathogen certified. That's something that you can do online. You get a bloodborne pathogen certificate and this will help prepare you more for um, bloodborne pathogens and different diseases and fluids and things like that and how to use precaution. We're always going to want to wear gloves when setting up as well as when we're working on the client. We recommend non-latex gloves because there are people that have sensitivities and allergies to them. We also recommend wearing a mask and disposable gowns over your clothing. This helps protect your clothes from bodily fluids and bloodborne pathogens. It also helps protect the client as well as the technician from spreading germs and bloodborne pathogens. There are some people that should not consider this treatment, such as nursing and pregnant mothers, people that are under the influence of alcohol or drugs, people that have allergies and go into anaphylactic reactions easily, people that have infections and open wounds. If they're on blood thinners, um, then they need to be aware that there's a very good chance that they'll have significant bruising, um, so you might want to reconsider. Prior to the procedure, you want to confirm that the client's off blood thinners, but we make sure that they do not discontinue any medication without getting permission from a doctor first. If they have a history of cold sores, we recommend that they take an antiviral if they're getting their lip area worked on. This is a preventative measure and they would need to start that a day or two prior to the procedure. Some of the complications can be overcorrection, also the filler lasting longer than you expected or not as long as you expected. Sometimes it can reactivate cold sores if you're not premedicated with the antiviral. They need to be prepared of these precautions before they get the treatment done. Sometimes they will get lumps or bumps. If this happens, we want to apply pressure for about 10 seconds and then we want to massage during the procedure and try to get those lumps to go down. If they don't go down right away or within a day or so, the client needs to be instructed to massage the area for about 10 seconds during a hot shower. And this usually helps dissipate the lumps within an hour or two. Setting up 
the area that we're going to be working in. We need to wash our hands first. We need to clean the entire area with a cavi wipe and you always want to wear gloves when using the cavi wipes. The cavi wipes are antibacterial, fungal. They're great for sanitizing and it works very quickly. Within two minutes everything is completely ready for the next client. So we wipe everything down with the cavi wipes and then we cover everything with plastic wrap. We just use plastic wrap on our chairs, on our trays, and this helps prevent any uh, penetration of any pathogens that we don't want to have penetrate. We also want to be sure that there are no porous um, surfaces anywhere, no carpet in the room, no pillows, or anything like that that's not completely disposable. We want to pre-fill the ampules, especially if you're using the Comfort In machine. Sometimes you'll want to have ampules pre-set up and ready to go. We want to have sterile gauze, Q-tips, of course, the device and the ampules on our tray. We want alcohol prep pads to clean the area prior to the procedure. We want a single use surgical marker to mark the areas. We use string. You can get pre-print inked string or you can do it yourself. We use that for marking and gritting the area. You can also use a white wax pencil to do the same thing. We also have emollient aftercare ointment for them to take home. We also use a ice roller that we keep in the freezer and we put a plastic bag on it and so that way it can be used for multiple clients. They just roll this on their lips and it helps um, with swelling before the procedure, during the procedure, and after the procedure. In the cleanup part of it, we're going to dispose the ampule um, into a sharps container and then we're going to wipe the tray, the chair, with the cavi wipes to be sure that everything is clean and sanitary for the next client. We need to make sure this dries for a couple of minutes before recovering the surface with either paper or saran wrap. We're going to clean the instrument with the cavi wipe and also allow it to completely dry for a couple of minutes before the next use. The next area that we're going to be talking about is facial anatomy. We're going to start with the skin the outermost part, the epidermis. The main function is to protect. The skin ranges in the epidermis about 0 0.07 millimeters on the eyelids, which is the thinnest area on our body, to 0.12 millimeters, which is more the thickness of the palms of our hands and our feet. The dermis is the next level. This contains the nerve endings, oil, sweat glands, and hair follicles. This is the area that most of the fillers are injected into. So this is also broken into three different levels, which is where the products that we use will penetrate. And that's the superficial dermis, the mid dermis, and the deep dermis. The third layer of the anatomy of the skin is the subcutaneous tissue, and that's made up of fatty connective tissue and the larger blood vessels. So that's where we want to try to avoid those when we're doing the injector. On this picture of the face, you can see where we want to especially avoid areas around the jowls and between the eyes, between the eyebrows. We also want to avoid all around the eye socket as well as the corners of our noses, which we call the wings. These areas have a lot of veins in them and you can very easily hit one of those which will cause significant bruising and can also even possibly cause a blockage in the vein. And the best way to avoid hitting one of these veins is to make sure their skin is very clean, make sure you have very good light, and I personally like to use a flashlight against the skin to be able to see um, if I can see any veins through the skin. Some people it's very easy to see their veins and other people can be quite a challenge. Next is lip anatomy. The lip anatomy, typically we have a ratio of 1 to 1.6 on the bottom lip. So the bottom lip is is about one and a half times the size of the upper lip. Some clients like it one to one, but most aesthetically pleasing is one to 1.6. So we can recommend this to our clients, but the ultimate decision is up to them and what they personally want. So this is all stuff that you would go over with them during a consultation. The lip is broken down into different categories. We have the upper lip and the lower lip. We have the cupid's bow, which is underneath the nose. That's that dip. Then we have um, the outer corners. We have the protruding part underneath our nose. The two lines that go from our nose down is a philtrum and a lot of times we'll want to mold that area and then there's under the cupid's bow. When you're mapping the lips you want to draw vertical lines down the center of the face. 
Sometimes we'll use string between the two front teeth on the top and pull the string up to know right where the center of the cupid's bow should be and where the center of the lip should be. Then we use either string or a ruler to mark vertical lines going down where the cupid's bow is vertically and horizontally. And that helps us know where to do the injections to give more balance and symmetry. We mark the lips where we're going to inject with a disposable marker. There's some proper and some poor techniques and the results vary and so we're going to go over some of those things. We want to make sure we have a consultation, take before pictures with really good lighting. You're going to have the client sitting at a 45 to 90 degree angle. You always want to look at them sitting up because that's what other people will see. Confirm with the client their expectations and the results that they're expecting. Answer questions and go over consent forms with them. Address any concerns that that your client may have. Explain the procedure and what we're doing and what to expect and make sure that they have realistic expectations as well as go over the aftercare with them. Test the device before using it to make sure it's dispensing properly. You want to be very familiar with it before you inject into a client. If you can visibly see or feel nodules, apply mm. moderate pressure and a massage for about 10 seconds. Most clients bleed through the injection sites. This is normal and should be minimal. Apply a bit of pressure to the site for a few seconds until the bleeding subsides. Apply ice before, during, and after. This helps with swelling and discomfort. Light bruising is normal but varies client to client. It is normal to lose some of the product, especially as we're starting and we're not familiar with the procedure and technique. Some of the filler will ooze out the side of the ampule. This becomes less and less as we get more experience and practice. And this can also be fixed by adjusting the pressure and the angle that we hold the ampule at. Use moderate pressure. Too light of pressure will result in a superficial outcome and loss of more product. Too hard of pressure will result in excessive bruising, bleeding, pain, and nodules and could possibly even cause a vascular occlusion. Lightly massage the product into the lips to evenly distribute the product and mold to the desired shape. Excessive massaging causes swelling and it can also cause the product to spread beyond the desired area. Incorrect depth pressure can cause blood flow blockages and bruising. Overuse, meaning you're doing the procedures too close together, can cause swelling, blockages, nodules, and pain. Excessive massaging can also cause swelling, bruising, pain, as well as the product dispersing beyond the desired area. Wait a minimum of two weeks for healing and to see the outcome before you do a touch-up on a client or a follow-up visit. After the second visit, then you want to wait a minimum of four weeks before the next visit and any subsequent visits after that. If if a client requests a session and you do not feel that they need it, use your discretion and trust your gut. If you're not comfortable doing it, it's your right to refuse that service. Some people need to repeat this process every four to six months. Other people can, it'll last up to a year. It varies significantly person to person. You'll want to administer one milliliter maximum per session on the lips. You never want to go past that. Many times we'll just do a third, a half, or two thirds of a milliliter per visit. Biorevitalization is the revitalization of skin in a biological way by returning the life to skin. The skin is injected with small dosages of hyaluronic acid. These dosages are 0.01, so very small amounts in a grid on the face that are, is one to one and a half centimeters apart. It's one of the most popular cosmetic procedures and it rejuvenates the skin beautifully and restores the natural level of hyaluronic acid. To do this, small dosages of serum are injected. It doesn't have to be hyaluronic acid, but it usually has a hyaluronic acid base. After the procedure, the level of hyaluronic acid is restored in the tissue and with it the hydro balance of the skin. In addition, after the procedure increases the production of collagen and elastin fibers increase, which are responsible for the elasticity of the skin. Therefore, with the help of biorevitalization, you can push the inevitable aging process. Biorevitalization is carried out the same as mesotherapy. There are combined drugs which in addition to hyaluronic acid include vitamins, antioxidants, complexes, 
and essential amino acids and peptides. We're going to divide the face into zones. Each injection goes into one zone and is one division. The distance between those are one to one and a half centimeter. After the procedure, we're going to apply a soothing cream, something similar to Aquaphor. The average course of biorevitalization consists of four treatments. This can vary from person to person depending on their age and the, what their skin is going through. To obtain a rejuvenating effect, we recommend the whole course of biorevitalization and they should be repeated about every two weeks. Again, mature skin is going to need a greater number of sessions than young skin. This is great for people that have deep wrinkles that have the nasal labial folds. This helps with alignment of the facial skin, helps with crow's feet, dark circles around the eyes. It gives more volume to the face, the cheekbones, the chin, and it helps change the contour of the lips, giving them more volume when it hydrates the skin and it improves scars. Mesotherapy is similar to biorevital but it goes a little deeper. These are intradermal injections of active substances. These include also vitamins, hyaluronic acid, and different lipids that go a little deeper. These peptides and vitamins, plant extracts, and all kinds of acids are often not in a pure form but mixtures, like liquid solutions or cocktails. And the different ones are used depending on the person's age, health of the skin, and what their issues are. Mesotherapy helps with um, prevention of aging skin, fine lines, large pores, oily skin. It can actually help with acne and hyperpigmentation. Professional serums such as Celdermi are made in South Korea based on innovative technologies. These serums contain special chemical compounds of peptides and recumbent proteins. It is these substances that contain, constantly renew the skin at the cellular level, providing regeneration and rapid recovery, as well as nourishing the dermis. Peptide compounds and serums are the exact copy of human peptides and provide full biocompatibility as well as being very safe and does not cause allergic reactions. Korean products such as Celtermi are approved by the CTFA and meet quality standards and are patented in all countries of the world. The FDA takes four years for the process to go through and we're two years into that process right now. All of the following serums are in the therapeutic mesotherapy line are available in packages of 10 bottles that are five milliliters each. The first one is Pure. Pure is for anti-aging, anti-wrinkle, whitening, and brightening. This serum is pretty much compatible with all skin and is a great anti-aging serum. Lipo is for breaking down fat cells and also for anti-aging. This helps with cellulite and breaking down fat. Stem is for regeneration. Stem is great to add to the other serums. You can mix them together to make cocktails and this helps with skin regeneration. Aloe is for improving hair growth and thickness. So this is done on the scalp and it's especially good for people that are starting to get thinning hair or that are just getting that bald patch on the back of their head. These procedures are also called nappage. So there's surface nappage, medium nappage and deep nappage. And basically the surface is done like a blanketing and it's done very surface. Then the medium is more a little bit deeper with the cocktails and the deep is more for just pretty much the lipo. The supplies that you're gonna need for these services can pretty much be purchased all from hyphiliausa.com. You can get the needle injectors, hyaluron pens, the aftercare creams, the serums, the hyaluronic acid, and cell termi all from hyphiliausa.com. And then we get our other products such as surgical markers, masks, cavi wipes, alcohol pads, green soap, the ice rollers, trash bags, dental bibs, hair nets, disposable chair covers, disposable clothing protectors, all from Amazon. The earning potential can be really good with the Hyaluron pen. Mesotherapy treatments, which are for hair loss, 
anti-aging whitening and cellulite. Usually these treatments are five to 10 sessions and the hyphilia is usually one to two sessions. This is for filling in the lips and the face. Touch-ups are done periodically so clients continue to come back to you. And the lipo treatments are usually a series of at least seven but up to 10 treatments. So if you're doing an average of 20 clients a year, you're gonna make about $8,600. If you're doing more like 60 clients a year, that's about $25,000 annually that you're making. Typically, if you average all the procedures that we do with the Hyaluron pen, you're averaging about $200 to $250 an hour. 